Hi, I'm James Pettifils. I teach New Testament and early Christianity at Biola University, uh, home of Talbot School of Theology. And I'm also a pastor in the South Bay uh, here in the Los Angeles area, and I've been there for about 15 years. Uh, and today we have the opportunity to talk to some local pastors who are also Talbot uh, graduates, and we're going to talk about the specific opportunities and challenges of doing ministry here in the Los Angeles, Orange County area. Uh, we have uh, with us today Kent Sparks, is the senior and founding pastor of Beach Cities Community, Community Church in Huntington Beach, California, as well as David Pfizer. He's the senior pastor of Neighborhood Christian Fellowship in Bellflower, California. Uh, Steve Choi, lead pastor of Crossway Church in Brea, California, and Jose Fernandez, pastor of Christ Church of the Valley, Espanol and Covina. Gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, coming here today to have this conversation. Great and that's what I hope it will be. We, we want to talk about some, um, some important, some specific questions and some broad ones. I'll begin with a really big question uh, that's on the minds of most of us that are doing ministry in this crazy place we call the Los Angeles, Orange County area. And that is, what are some of the unique challenges and opportunities? We'll start with a big question, so I'm going to throw it out there. Unique challenges? Yeah. Well, we're in a beach community, and so the unique challenge is known as the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> and everybody wants to be there on a Sunday, sunny Sunday. And so you're competing with that as well as you're competing with the mountains, as you know. Mm -hmm. Just they can go skiing within two hours, right? Or if they want to go to the desert, they're in the desert community in a couple of hours. There's recreation everywhere. So our biggest competitor is just the outdoor and active lifestyle of the people who live in the beach community. And that is a constant uh, back and forth kind of struggle that we mm -hmm. have. Uh, what we've learned is about 41% of the people who call Beach Cities Community Church their church home will show up on any given yep. Sunday. <laughs> know that one. And then on Easter, when you have everybody shows up the same day, we're at the local high school amphitheater, and you know it's like, holy cow, where did you guys come from? Yeah. And it, well, everybody showed up the same day. Yep. And so that's the biggest challenge that we seem to face all the time. So we've gone to multiple services, mm -hmm. and two night services, Saturday night, Sunday night, and then this traditional Sunday morning services to give them options. Yeah, definitely a challenge. Yeah. Uh, for me, James, uh, uh, there are so many diverse communities in Southern California. So I, I do Spanish ministry. Uh, and so I, I need to know uh, where the pockets are of Spanish speakers mm -hmm. uh, and within the, you know, let's say the uh, San Dimas, uh, uh, city of San Dimas where I come from. Uh, next to it is the city of Covina. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, the first part of our ministry, we did uh, try to raise a Spanish ministry in San, San Dimas area, and we did, but it was limited to an extent uh, because, uh, again, statistically, in that community, there is, what, 21% Hispanic? Mm -hmm. You go two miles down to Covina, now it jumps to 46% wow. up, you know. And so uh, I needed to know, uh, I, I knew that I was limited, uh, what I can do and grow in the San Dimas community. So I needed to know that next door, two miles down, Covina, I had a better chance to reach more Hispanics uh, for Christ. Yeah, finding so, these unique pockets. Unique pockets and knowing if you're going to reach out to the, in my case, Spanish speakers, you don't need to know where they're at, where your, your fishing holes are at. If yeah. You, no. you know, so. And yeah, knowing your community. Knowing the community. And it can change yeah. from block to right. block to block. Right, right. Yeah. Drastically. Yeah, good. Yeah, really. Yeah. I think I would add um, to that, too. I think um, um, one part of it, our, our church, um, probably uh, majority of our church, average age, maybe mid-30s, late-30s. And so little ones, soccer games, basketball games. And, um, you know, if they they make all-star team, then it's, it's double the games. And so mm -hmm. we got that struggle. Um, secondly, I think just how you mentioned, but just how the sense of a, us being a community church. It's not like people only go to the church in their city, they commute. And then it makes it very hard for them to do small groups and to, mm -hmm. you know, they're not gonna fight traffic for an hour. And we have people that come all the way from Temecula to wow. South Bay. We have some people from the west side and Pasadena. So midweek, we're trying to, when we try to gather, it's, it's practically impossible. Um, and we can't ask them to drive an hour through traffic to come for something. So that, th that's unique. Um, we face that. Um, and so uh, we deal with that as well. And um, 
you know, I think that is probably very different for Southern California, for Orange County life, you know, and LA life. Um, yeah. it's, it's hard to get together sometimes. Yeah, um, it's a, yeah. the old adage, you can, you can blame the traffic uh, if you're 15 minutes late for anything. Well, yeah. it's traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, so we deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, what about Bellflower? What's going on over there? <laughs> Bellflower is a unique place. Um, I love it. It's, um, it's uh, Bellflower is like a low income. Well, I mean, it depends. Each neighborhood in Bellflower is different, but 66% of Bellflower is like a rental community. Um, our church is smack dab in a neighborhood of just low income families. Um, so I, remember, you know, we had one family come, and then next year they moved to Vegas, right? Because rent got too high. Yeah. So very transient. Um, it's diverse, you know. Like you have a, you have one member in a prayer meeting who uh, just prays about what what's wrong with this country and God save America, yes, and, then, yes, yes. and then another dude comes up and is like, "Hey, I smoked weed last mm -hmm. night, and it, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with it." And and it's like, how do you kind of do life together, and how do you bridge this gap? And um, I think in a low income neighborhood too, there's. What poverty does is it just kind of kills the spirit of ambition, of wanting more, and it just kind of accepting just how dreary life can be, that there's not much else out there. And so um, getting people to think, it doesn't matter in any context, but beyond themselves and to believe that God has called them for a purpose, is, that's challenging. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in our neighborhood, there's a lot of churches where, uh, frankly, it's like the old white folks who they own, they're the ones who are giving, and yet the neighborhood has changed to Hispanic or um, multiple minority groups. And that's a challenge, right, um, of how can we kind of make this a new church for today rather than living in the past. And so it's messy. <laughs> it's just messy um, where we're at. Yeah, if you were going to tell a uh, same question, basically, but if you were going to tell a Talbot student who is finishing up and wants to begin a church, and let's say they're not from the area, they're not from Los Angeles, uh, and they wanted to begin a church somewhere, or partner with the church, what what would be a piece of advice you might give to them to say, all right, here is here's something to think about, or an expectation to manage, or an opportunity to really go after? What do you think? Hmm. What's on my head is uh, like. Uh, get as far as as far as you can from Biola campus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get out into the inner city, get out into a challenging area, get under a pastor that's doing something in a good community, trying something new, you know, get your feet wet, get in there. Um, yeah, it's not always going to be the place where you might be forever, yeah. but it's a good start. Learn some things, you know, take a risk. Yeah. Don't be afraid, do it. You know, be spirit-led and get in there and, and do some work for the Lord. I love that. That's great advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what else? What do you think? The uh, only thing I'd add to that is just what he said, is piggyback. Find a church that's alive and vibrant, mm -hmm. a church that is seeing souls saved, that the mm -hmm. pastor has a passion to see people come to faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. And it because it, everything comes down from there. If he doesn't have a passion for souls, everybody else becomes kind of, mm -hmm. oh, we got other things to do, and it gets lost in the shuffle. The most important thing is getting guys saved. That's where it all begins. If they're, if they're going to hell when you're done, you failed miserably. Mm -hmm. And so get under a pastor who's fired up about that, passionate about that, wants to see them saved, and is putting his money and his time and his effort into doing that. The second thing is make sure it has an environment where people are greatly loved. Mm -hmm. That when you walk through there, there's not a spirit of judgmentalism and, you know, clipboard, what's everybody doing? But instead, there's, there's a sort of a freedom of grace and and I would even say almost too much grace occasionally. You might hear a cuss word in the hallway, and that's a good no, sign. never. That's a good sign that maybe real people live here yeah. and uh, are worshiping here and, yeah. and know God because unbelievers talk like that. Yeah. And if you're, no one's ever talking like that, you probably don't have any unbelievers in your church, which means I don't know who you're preaching the gospel to. You're just teaching the Bible, which is great, and you do that, but you're teaching it to an end that people would be equipped to help people find Christ and grow. So if you had those two things, I think you're good to go and then follow wherever the Lord's leading you, man. You're going to have a good time. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.